So it's uh, useful in a number of different disciplines to be able to resolve forces into, into different reference planes. Um, what that means is, well, if, if I had a, a force acting on this sheet of acrylic um, in this direction, so I was pushing the sheet in this direction, but let's, say, let's suppose the, the sheet had some sort of support mechanisms which acted uh, horizontally and vertically. What I would need to do to know what the forces going through that support mechanism, uh, the forces going through the support mechanisms were, would be to resolve the, this force into its horizontal and vertical components. So I'd have to resolve this force into a new reference plane of horizontal and, uh, horizontal and vertical. Um, to do that, I'd need to know what angle I was, I was uh, turning the force through. So some angle of theta degrees. So to do that, to find the vertical and horizontal component of this force, what I'd need to do is use trigonometry. So the trig functions, if, uh, um, if you remember, if I have, um, I assume my force is the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle. Um, and this is the, the angle I'm interested in, theta. Then this side is the adjacent, and this side is the opposite. And the trig functions are, of course, so providing I knew the, uh, um, the angle and the hypotenuse, the force that I was interested in, I could work out what the uh, vertical and horizontal components are. So instead of using A and O here, and H, I could write it like this. So I could write it like this, where I have the horizontal uh, component of my force over the force, or the vertical component of my, over my force equal to this. And that means if I just multiply both sides by the force, um, it would look something like this, where F sine theta is the horizontal component, and F cosine theta is the vertical component. It's important to uh, know which angle you're talking about in this right angle triangle, because if you're actually talking about this, um, this angle here, um, the, these would uh, switch over. So uh, you just got to be careful about wh what the angle is that you're using in this um, to resolve your forces. So the horizontal component and the vertical component Um, could replace F on a uh, force diagram. So let's go through an example with some numbers. Um, let's say I had a 100 kilonewton force acting at 50 degrees from the vertical, and I wanted to know what the vertical and horizontal components of that force were. Well, the, the vertical component um, is equal to the uh, force uh, multiplied by cosine 50, so 100 cosine 50. And the horizontal component is equal to the force sine the angle, so the sine of the angle. So this is 100 sine 50. And if we uh, put those numbers into our calculators, what we get out is the vertical component is equal to 64.3 kilonewton, and the horizontal component is equal to 76.6 kilonewton. So we can replace that in a force, uh, this 100 kilonewton force into uh, uh, in a force diagram with just the vertical and the horizontal component. So you realize that these uh, don't add up to 100. They're not supposed to. They're distinct components of that 100 kilonewton force. 